Welcome to part 3 of Let's Play Death Trap Dungeon. At the end of the last part I noted down that the next paragraph was 369, so let's go there now. And here we are, here's paragraph 369. Um, the tunnel turns sharply to the right, continuing east for as far as you can see. Throm stops and tells you to halt as well. He turns his head slowly from side to side, listening. I hear footsteps coming down the tunnel towards us, he whispers. Draw your sword. You both crouch down to hide in the shadows, and not a minute too soon, for a moment later you see the silhouette of two armed figures approaching. Throm jumps up and dashes forward, screaming a loud battle cry. Um, there are two cave trolls in front of you. Throm attacks the first one with his battle axe, and you run to his aid and attack the second cave troll. Cave troll, skill 10, stamina 11. Okay. Um... So we need Cave Troll 10, 11. Whoops. Skill 10. That's the same as mine, isn't it? Uh, stamina 11. Whoops, wrong button. Or key, I should say. Okay, let's get the dice program up. We need two cubic dice. Yep, that's uh, that's done. Um, okay, so we're, um, we're rolling for him first. Okay. Okay, he gets five, that's fifteen. I get twelve, that's twenty-two. So fifteen to twenty-two. That means I win the first round. So he's down to nine. Okay, next. Okay, he gets a three, that's thirteen. I get nine, that's nineteen. So thirteen to nineteen. Means I win again. Okay, um, he gets a 7, that's 17, I get a 6, that's 16, so he just beats me, uh, 17 to 16, which means I have to take off 2 points of stamina, let's do that now, so we're down to 11 stamina now, um, okay, next one, there's the dice program, there we are, okay, he gets an 11, that's 21, I get 7, that's 17. So 21 to 17, he beats me again. Oops, wrong button again. Okay, so I'm down to 9 stamina. Brilliant. Right, see if we can make that up. Okay, he gets an 8, that's 18. I get a 10, that's 20. So 18 to 20, I win. And he's down to five. Okay, so just three more hits. Um, he gets a six at 16. I get an 11, that's 21. So 16 to 21, I win again. Good. He's down to three, just two more hits now. See if I can do this without losing any more stamina. Okay, he gets a six at 16. I get a seven at 17. So I win again, just. So that's 16 to 17. And he's down to one. Okay, final hit, I hope. He gets a ten. That's twenty. I get a nine. That's nineteen. No, it wasn't to be. So twenty to nineteen, he takes off some stamina. Let's put that in now. Down to seven stamina after use some provisions. I have ten of them. I haven't used any yet. Okay, maybe the last one now, I hope. He gets a seven. That's seventeen. I get a 6 at 16, so he beats me again at 17 to 16. He's he's caught his second wind, so down to 5 stamina now, uncomfortably close to death. So let's do it again. Um, he gets a, um, a 6 at 16, I get a 7 at 17, so it's reversed now and I beat him and defeat him. So 16 to 17, opposite of the last one. Okay, so he's down to naught, and that is that. So we have defeated the cave troll. I'll just get rid of the buzzing. I don't know if you can hear it, but it usually gets rid of it. There we are. Okay, so if you win, turn to 288. Uh, we did win, so let's go. 288, here we go. Um, you look to your left and see Throm standing over the cave troll he has slain. Uh, blood is pouring out from a deep cut in his shoulder, but it does not seem to worry him. You search the bodies of the cave trolls, but find nothing apart from a bone ring on a leather cord hanging, 
hanging round the neck of... I'll read that again. But you find nothing apart from a bone ring on a leather cord hanging around the neck of one of them. That's a bit of a tongue twister. The, the ring is engraved with a symbol which Throm recognises. He explains that it must have belonged to druids of the north and that an ancient talisman such as this will increase your powers if your body is able to accept it. Throm will not touch it and advises you to leave it well alone. If you wish to put the ring on, turn to 64. If you would rather continue east with Throm, turn to 221. Um, we are going to continue east with Thrawn. We're not going to bother with the bone ring. So 221. Um, the tunnel leads into a damp, high-ceilinged cavern with a rock-strewn floor. Long, dripping, teeth-like stalactites hang down threateningly. Their constant dripping, um, creating milky pools on the floor. Almost thought that said creating rather than creating anyway their constant dripping creating milky pools on the floor now the tunnel carries on through an archway carved in the shape of a demonic mouth if you wish to search the chamber turn to 374 if you would rather head straight for the archway turn to 60 we're going to head straight for the archway and turn to 60 okay ah oh, yes this bit i remember this uh, the tunnel ends at a large oak door. Throm wastes no time in testing the handle and is somewhat surprised to find the door unlocked. He pushes it open and walks into a torchlit chamber. Sitting alone on an ornate chair is a dwarf who bids you enter the chamber. As you do so, the oak door swings shut behind you. Adventurers, you have done well to get this far, says the dwarf in a deep voice. However, as you both know, there can only be one winner in the trial of champions. As trial master, it is my duty to Baron Succumvit to let only the most able continue. Therefore, I must devise a test of wit and strength to eliminate one of you. Please do not attempt to dispose of me. It would be utterly pointless, for, as you can see, there is no obvious way out of this chamber, and only I know where the hidden exit lies. Now, if you would care to decide between you who will go first, I shall make the necessary preparations. You look at Thrum, suddenly angry that your effective partnership might come to an end. He leans over and whispers in your ear that you should try to kill the dwarf and worry about the exit later. If you wish to join Throm in attacking the dwarf, turn to 179. If, if you would rather persuade Throm to go through with the dwarf's test, turn to 365. Okay, obviously we're not going to attack the dwarf because, you know, what he just said. And it makes sense because, you know, he isn't scared and he knows it would be foolish to attack him. So we're going to uh, persuade Throm to go through the dwarf's test, 365. Here we go. Uh, you tell Throm that there is no point in killing the dwarf as you will never find your way out of the chamber alone. You argue that an opportunity of tricking the dwarf might arise later once you have found the exit from the chamber. So you intend to go through with the dwarf's test. You tell the dwarf that you are ready and he beckons you to follow him, telling Throm to wait for his return. A secret door opens in the chamber wall and you follow the dwarf into a small circular room. He closes the door behind you and hands you two bone dice, telling you to throw them onto the floor. You roll a six and a two, a total of eight. The dwarf asks you to roll them again, but this time you must predict whether the total will be the same as, or less, or more than eight. If you wish to guess that it will be the same, turn to 280. If you wish to guess that it, it will, uh, that it will total less than eight, turn to 191. If you wish to guess that it will total more than eight... Uh, turn to 84. Okay, we are going to guess that it will total less than 8. Um, so 191. I mean, this is just luck, really. There's there's nothing you can do about this apart from just guess, unless you know what will happen. But So yeah, so we're going to guess that it will total less than 8 and turn to 191. Yeah, it's just one of those things. 191. Okay. Uh, roll two dice. If the total is less than eight, turn to 152. If the total is eight or higher, turn to 121. Okay, yeah, so there's no way out of this really ab apart from guessing. Um, 
I think the better probability is with less than eight, which is why you want to go with less than eight. So, um, so yeah, we're going to roll the dice. So we have to be, you know, we have to try and be uh, be right, really. Obviously, the the most likely, uh, if you roll two dice, the highest probability of of well, the most likely thing. Yeah, the most likely number you'll get a uh, single um, single total that you, you know, you're that you're most likely to get. It, is a seven um, because you can get a seven by getting one and six, six and one, uh, two and five, five and two, three and four, and four and three. That's six out of uh, uh, how many rolls you can get. Uh, six times six, yeah, that's six out of thirty-six, which is now wait a minute, six possible rolls of seven out of. Um, out of 2 to 12 um, yeah so it's the most likely outcome is getting a 7 well most likely outcome is is not getting a 7 out of getting a 7 and not getting a 7 but if you want to uh, compare to getting like a uh, compared to rolling a 2 a 3 a 4 5 6 um, etc 8 9 10 11 and 12 um, a 7 is the most likely so it's, um, I think it's, would it be one out of six? Yeah, so you can get a seven by getting one and one and six, six and one, two and five, five and two, three and four, and four and three. Uh, so yes, that's um, six out of, uh, six out of something, whatever it is, I don't know. Anyway, um... Well, there'd be 36 possible, 36 possible um, outcomes of the of two dice, wouldn't there? Because the first die would be one to six, and the second die would be one to six. So six times six, 36. Yeah, so it's obviously six out of 36, which is a sixth chance. So your your odds of getting a seven are a one out of six if you roll two dice, and then. Roll of getting a two is only one out of thirty-six because you only get one, uh, two one time with two ones. So that's one. Getting a two is either yes. Yeah, getting a three is either two and one or one and two. Getting a three is either one and three, three and one or two and two. Getting a f um, yeah, yeah. Getting a five is either one and four, four and one, two and three, and three and two. I'm getting a six is one and five, five and one, three and three, two and four and four and two. Yeah, I think it's more likely that you'll get. So I'm pretty sure it's more likely that you'll get a number less than or equal to uh, less than eight. So it's in your interest to uh, to choose less than eight. Anyway, I've, I've been going on for ages about this. Anyway, so um, we're going to roll two dice and hope that the the outcome is less than eight. Here we go. And of course it isn't naturally. Yeah, it, after everything I just said. But yeah, it, it isn't a foolproof way. I mean, there is still a chance of getting more than uh, getting more. Anyway, um, so yeah, we got eight or higher, so we have to go to 121. Now the dwarf looks at the dice. Not very good at playing the odds, are you? He sneers. I regret you must suffer a penalty before you can continue. Uh, from out of his pocket, he produces two pills. One is shaped with the letter S and the other stamped with the letter L. He asks you to choose one and swallow it. If you wish to swallow the pill stamped with the letter S, turn to 26. If you wish to swallow the other pill, turn to 354. Uh, S and L here, they stand for skill and luck. So... Do I have what potion do I have? Do I have the skill potion? Yeah, I'm going to choose the um, the skill one because I can get my skill back with the potion later. So, so I'm going to choose the one with S on it. So 26. Now the pill makes you feel dull and lethargic. Lose two skill points. So yeah, I was right. So we have to put that down to eight, but we can put that up with the potion later. Um, if anyone uh, thinks my calculating the probability there was a bit wrong, please let me know. I'm, I don't mind, uh, but I'm pretty sure the probability of getting a seven is um, one out of six. Uh, six out of thirty-six. There's six ways you can get uh, six ways you can get a seven by rolling two dice, and thirty-six total uh, 
uh, dice roll combinations. So, so six out of thirty-six is uh, is one out of six. So it'd be a sixth probability of getting a seven. Anyway, um, right. So yeah, we've taken off two points of skill. Now the dwarf tells you that you can now progress to the second stage of the test. He reaches for a wicker basket and tells you that there is a snake inside it. He tips up the basket and the snake drops onto the floor. It is a cobra and it rears up into the air ready to strike. Now the dwarf says he wants to test your reactions. You must grasp the cobra barehanded below its head, avoiding its deadly fangs. You, uh, you crouch down on the floor tensing yourself for the moment at which to seize it. Roll two dice. If the total is the same as or less than your skill, turn to 55. If the total is greater than your skill, turn to 202. Okay, so annoyingly I took away the skill points. So I'm, I'm still down to 8. So maybe I just need the this um, dice roll to be 8 or less. So, Which is good. I got a 6, thank God. Right. So yeah, um... Yep, go up to two there. Okay, so um, what did I just get? Yeah, um, I got, I got a six. Roll dice three and three. So there's a six there. Good. I was worried I might have chosen one die because I to get rid of the buzzing. Anyway, so turn to fifty-five because it was less than our skill. So fifty-five. Uh, with lightning speed, you thrust your hand out and grip the cobra just below its open mouth. You lift it up and, arm outstretched, dangle it in front of the dwarf. He doesn't flinch, but says in his calm, expressionless way, Please put the cobra back in the basket and prepare for the final part of the test. Follow me. You do what he says and follow him back in... Uh, uh, and follow him back into the chamber, where Thrum is pacing up and down, obviously ill at ease. You have to tell him... Yeah, uh, I don't know how I got that. Um, you wave to him while the dwarf opens the second secret door and tells you to walk on through and wait for him. Again you comply and you find yourself in another circular room, although this one resembles a small arena. The floor is covered with sand and a small balcony runs around the arena wall. Opposite the secret door by which you entered is an ominous looking wooden door. Suddenly you hear a shout, and you look up to see the smiling dwarf standing on the balcony. He throws two pieces of paper down to you. On one of them, the words No Crop Is are written. On the other, Ruin Moat. In his ever calm voice, he says, If you rearrange the letters of the words, you will find the names of two creatures. You may choose which one to fight in my arena of death. If you can identify the creature by rearranging the letters No Crop Is... Um, turn to 143. If you can identify the creature by rearranging the letters Ruin Moat, turn to 40. If you cannot identify either of the creatures, turn to 347. Okay, uh, Ruin Moat is Minotaur. Uh, no crop is... is... What would that be? I don't know what what would that be. Oh. No crop is. I'm, I'm, I've never been any good at anagrams and rearranging letters, but I can easily see that's Minotaur. No crop is is. Orcs is it something orcs? Might be something orcs. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's something orcs. Or orc. Like, uh, yeah, something orc maybe, but I, I don't know. But Anyway, the only one we can identify is Minotaur, so we're going to go to 40. And guess what we have to do there? You call out to the dwarf that you are ready to fight the Minotaur. The wooden door rises slowly and you see the fearsome beast, half man, half bull, step into the arena. Steam blows from its nostrils as it works itself up into a rage ready to attack. Suddenly it rushes forward, swinging its double-headed axe. Minotaur, skill 9, stamina 9. If you win, turn to 163. Okay, so we have to fight a Minotaur um, with only skill 8, annoyingly. Um, um, I'm on 
paragraph 40. Can I use a th provisions more than... Can I use a provision for... Except when engaged in a battle. Well, I'm not in uh, currently engaged. I haven't started fighting yet, so... Um, I'm going to use a couple of... Um, I think not engaged in a battle means while the battle is going on. So I haven't started the battle yet. So I can I can use a couple of provisions, which I will do. I'll put this down to eight. Um, that's how I'm interpreting the rules anyway. Uh, so I'm going to put this up to f nine and then up to 13. So that's how I'm interpreting the rules of this. Because I'm not engaged in a battle yet. I think engaged in a battle means once you started fighting and you've lost some stamina and then you regain because you're about to die. I think that's not allowed, but I haven't started the battle yet. So Anyway, so we have skill. It has skill 9, stamina 9. Skill 9, stamina 9. There we go. And 9... There we go. Okay, let's start rolling. I only have skill 8 at the moment, so we're rolling for him first. He gets an 8, that's a 17. I get a 6, that's 14, so already up to a bad start. Um, 17, 14. Okay, so I've already lost some stamina. Down to 11. Okay, next he gets an 11. Brilliant, that's 20. I don't think I can beat him. 20. I get a 4, that's uh, 12. So 20 to 12. 20. 12. He takes another thing off me. Alright, okay. He gets a he gets a 6, that's 15. I get a 9, that's 17. So 15 to 17. Good. 15 to 17, and he goes down to 7, okay, he gets a 3, that's good, that's 12, I get 10, that's 18, so 12 to 18, that was that was a good one, 12 to 18, that's him down to 5, okay, he gets a, a 6, that's 15, I get a 6, that's four, uh, 14, so he just beats me. 15 to 14, that was annoying. I'll have to use some more provisions, I think, after this battle, assuming I win. Okay, um, he gets a, a 3, good, that's 12. I get 6, that's 14, so 12 to 14. He's down to three. If I win an attack round, I'm going to use some luck here, which is, which I said I'd never do. But uh, his skill is higher, and I, I just want to—I don't want him to be um, caught on one like the last one was. I had three attack rounds with him at, you know, two attack rounds with him at one or something, and I, I don't want to be caught out like before. Um, anyway, so he gets uh, an eight. That's uh, seventeen. I get a ten. That's eighteen. So right now he's won that. So I've won that one. So. He at 17 to 18, and then I'm going to use some luck. So if I win this luck, it means I take off an extra two points of stamina. But if I lose this luck thing, then I take off only one point of stamina, and he's only down to two. But if I win, if I win this luck thing, he gets all the points of stamina off because that would take off uh, um, four points of stamina. So I need to roll test my luck. I'll put it down to 11 now because it will be. Uh, test my luck, and if this uh, uh, if this dice roll is 12 or less, which is, is guaranteed to be, then I uh, th th then I'm lucky and I get all his health off. Uh, uh, really, it should be at minus one, but I can't really get his health to minus one. It has to be naught. So uh, I only need th three. Uh, uh, I only need three stamina points, and the luck thing, if I win, takes off four. Anyway, so. Yep, so it was, I mean, it's guaranteed to be 12 or, or below because the highest result with a dice roll, two di with two dice roll, is going to be 12. So, you know, so now my luck is down to 11 and I've defeated him. I did that because I didn't want him to be caught on one and then to carry on taking health or, or stamina off me while, uh, you know, while he only, is one, he only has one left, which would be annoying. Anyway, so I defeated the Minotaur um, with a bit of luck and 163 we're turning to. 
before I read the paragraph, I will just use some more provisions because I need some more provisions. I'm going to go down to six. There's no, uh, again, there's nothing in the rules that says I can't eat more than one. Nothing in the rules. That puts another eight under my thing, so it puts me up to 15. Um, um, for my s stamina. Okay, so 163. Uh, the dwarf calls down from the balcony, congratulating you on your victory. He throws a sack down into the arena and tells you to relax and regain your strength for the final part of the test. Then he walks off, saying he will return in about 10 minutes. You open the sack and find a jug of wine and a cooked chicken. If you wish to eat and drink the dwarf's offerings, turn to 363. If you would rather just sit down and await his return, turn to 302. Okay, we're going to eat uh, the dwarf's offerings to turn to 363. Kind of regret using those provisions now, but never mind. Oh, it only has two stamina points, good. The food and drink are excellent and you feel much better. Add two stamina points. Fully satisfied, you sit down and await the dwarf's return. Turn to 302. Okay, turn to 302. Uh, two, stam two extra stamina points. I'm also going to use the potion of skill now. Um, because, actually I don't know, should I use it? I have 17 stamina and 8 skill. Um, I'm going to risk and not use the potion of skill yet. Uh, anyway, 302, because we know what's coming next, don't we? This, this, this was inevitable as soon as we started this alliance, uh, so to speak. After about 20 minutes, the dwarf reappears on the balcony. He calls down to you saying, Well, I do have an interesting problem on my hands. Uh, prepare to fight your next opponent. The wooden door rises once again, and you are surprised to see a, f you are surprised to see a familiar face. It is Throm. He is cut and badly bruised and doesn't seem to recognise you. He is clearly delirious as he staggers forward with his axe raised to attack you. The dwarf laughs and says... The cobra bit him, but he has the strength of an ox and managed to carry on, even though most men would have died. Now you must fight him to decide, finally, which of you will continue the trial of champions. You shout abuse at the dwarf, protesting against the cruelty of such a contest. He merely laughs, and you have no option but to defend yourself against poor Throm. Okay, Throm, skill 10, stamina 12. Despite his wounds, Throm is immensely strong. Okay, so skill 10, stamina 12... This could be a difficult battle, I won't lie to you. Um, skill 10. He has, yeah, skill 10, which might be a bit of a problem. Okay, uh, he only has 12 stamina, though. Okay, so we roll for him first. So he gets a 6, that's 16. I get a 7, that's 15. So he beats me already. So uh, 16 to 15. So he's taken off 2 points of stamina already. That's the, the wine and the, and the chicken gone. Okay, 15. But yeah, this is a difficult book. Okay, he gets um, gets a 7, that's 17. I get a 3, that's 11. So 17 to 11. Beats me again. Okay, so... Down to 13 now. Okay, um... He gets a, a 2, that's 12. I get a 10, that's 18. So 12 to 18. So I finally take some health off him. That's 10 he's on now. Okay. Okay, he gets a 7, that's 17. I get an 11, that's 19. So no, uh, 17 to 19, that's good. Whoops. He's down to 8 now. Okay, he gets a, a 6, that's 16. I get a 4, that's 12. So 16 to 12, so he beats me there. <clears throat> um, so I'm down to 11 now. Okay. Okay, he gets five, that's fifteen. I get an eight. That's um 
16. So that's uh, 15 to 16, and I just I just beat him on this attack round, so he's down to six. Okay. Okay, he gets a six, that's 16, and I get a seven, that's 15. So 16 to 15, he just beats me. I go down to nine stamina. Okay, he gets a six, that's 16, I get a nine, that's um, 17. So uh, 16 to 17. So I just beat him. Yeah, 8 plus 9 is 17, yeah. Can't seem to... I was trying to think about that. Okay. So just two more hits. Okay, he gets a 6, that's 16. I get a 3, that's 11. So 16 to 11, and that puts me down to... That puts me down to 7 stamina. Okay. All right, he gets um, a 5, that's 15. I get a 2, that's 10. So 15 to 10. That's annoying, actually, because that was a low score for him. Would have hoped to get a... to beat him on that one. Would have hoped to beat him on that one. Puts me down to 5. Okay, two more hits for him. Okay. Okay, he gets a 4, that's 14. I get a 10, that's 18. So, um, 14 to 18. That puts him down to 2, so just one more hit now. One more hit. Okay, he gets a 4, that's 14. And I get a 9, that's 17. Which means... Uh, 14 to 17, that means I win. Okay, that was a difficult battle, that, uh, I must say. It was really annoying how uh, my skill went down to 8, and I'm down to 5 stamina. End of the battle, I'm going to use another 2 provisions. Actually, no, I won't yet, I'll just see if, if he heals me afterwards as a reward or something, because uh, I can't remember. Okay, so yeah, that's that battle done. If you win, turn to 379. Exhausted by your long duel, you fall to your knees. As you stare at Throm's still body, a bitter loathing for the dwarf fills your heart. Somehow you, will, uh, somehow you will avenge Throm. Engulfed in your hatred, you do not notice the dwarf enter the arena until he is standing right in front of you. A loaded crossbow aimed at your chest. I know what you are thinking, he says. He says calmly. But remember that only I know the way out of here. Get up, it's time for you to leave. Once on your feet, the dwarf indicates that you should walk ahead of him. Back in the chamber, he crosses over to the northern wall and pushes against one of its stones. A door-like section of the wall swings out, opening into another crystal-lit tunnel. With his crossbow still aimed at your chest, uh, the dwarf smiles, saying good luck. If you wish to walk straight into the tunnel, turn to 213. If you would rather take a punch at the dwarf, turn to 145. Okay, we're going to walk straight into the tunnel, so we're not going to punch him. Uh, 213. So I have to let this one go, really. Right. Um, the tunnel soon divides into two. You hear a buzzing sound coming from the western branch. If you wish to walk west to investigate who or what is making the noise, turn to 108. If you would rather continue north, turn to 14. Okay, we're going to investigate, so turn to 108. Okay. There is a large panel of glass in the left-hand wall of the tunnel. Through it you can see a bright torch-lit room teeming with giant insects 
uh, of every possible description. Bees, wasps, beetles, ticks, even the mites are over six centimetres long. The noise is threatening. In the middle of the room, a jewelled crown lies on top of a small table. What looks like a large diamond is set in the middle of the crown. Will you break the glass and try to snatch the crown, turn to 394, continue west, turn to 59, or return to the junction to head north, turn to 14? Um, we're going to continue west and ignore the crown thing. 59. Uh, ahead in the far distance you hear the sound of slow footsteps coming towards you. Unsure of unsure of who or what might be approaching, you look around for a place to hide. You find a large crack in the tunnel wall which lies in shadow. If you wish to stand your ground with your sword drawn, turn to 241. If you'd rather hide in the shadows, turn to 283. We're going to stand our ground. 341. But before we do, we're going to use a couple of provisions. So I'm going to put it down to four and I'm going to put myself up to 13. That'll put me up to 13, won't it? Yep. Okay, so we're going to stand our ground, 341. A crippled man with shackled feet shuffles into sight, carrying a wooden tray laden with bread and water. He looks tired and miserable, and quite unmoved by the sight of you. Tries to walk past. Uh, will you talk to him? Turn to 367. Take the bread and water off his tray. Turn to 38. Offer him some of your provisions if you have any left. Turn to 169. Okay, we're going to talk to him, but we will do that in the next video, because... Um, uh, I've done enough. I've been playing for more than half an hour now, possibly even 40 minutes. So yeah, so next time I will talk to him, so I'll put that down and put next paragraph 367. Okay. And uh, in the next video, in the next video I will be going to 367 and talking to the man. I'll just... I am... Um, and talking to the man. And... Uh, I will uh I'll hope you can join me for the next part so um goodbye